Good afternoon, my inspired friends. I'm just about ready to go and visit my horses and giving you a quick update. It's been just under about a month since I moved my horses from one barn to the next and they're settling in really, really well. My new barn owner is amazing and I'm very grateful for all that she does to help acclimate them to their new facility. And so all the things that she's doing that I'm doing will help to get them prepared emotionally, mentally, and physically for their next step, which I'm going to be doing in the next week of saddling and then riding in the outdoor arena. So what is it about the outdoor arena that I've been a little concerned about? Look at this little piece of curly locks. Anyway, <laughs> um, I know, curly hair. I, I have lots to talk about with my curls. So anyway, so her outdoor arena has is in an area that is right next to a very busy road with big trucks and motorcycles and things and tractors and lots of noises. And my horses have never been in an arena that's been next to something so busy. So what I've been doing for the last month, except during Christmas, of course, because I was in Minnesota, is bringing them out to the outdoor arena and allowing them to just acclimate to the sounds, to the feel, to the environment. So like what I was talking about in my last videos is their environment they need to feel safe in. So they're in their stall during the day and about three o'clock they go out to their paddock, the two of them. And the two of them love to munch on the hay all night long until the next morning. And then they go back to their stall. So, they're really good now with this little routine that Stephanie has made up for them, haltering, walking out two by two to the outdoor arena, to the outdoor paddock, munch and munch and munch, come back in in the morning and be in their stall. And so I usually come out between 11 and one, usually about one o'clock, because you know, I've got all these important things I have to do like write in my journal and plan for my day and maybe maybe go grocery shopping. I doubt that. I doubt that very much. But anyway, um, important things to do like you. We have a lot that we experience during the day before we go and see our horses. So as my curls want to migrate south, there we go. Um, I, I'm going to digress again and go back to the outdoor arena. So my horses are used to outdoor arenas, but not to this one where it's very noisy. So my whole thing before I want to ride my horses in a very different environment is getting them used to it. So I bring them out there, let them walk around at Liberty. I go play games with them. So we weave in and out of cones at Liberty. We go to the mounting block. We walk over cones. I let them munch a bunch on the little weedlets along the fence line of the outdoor arena. And they get to hear the big semi, the, the motorcycles racing by, all of that so that if they get worried, they're going to learn without me on their back. And yes, I do know how to ride, but yes, I don't want to have any problems. So I do what is called prior and proper preparation. And so when I prepare them for the environment, because the environment is so important, we want them to come in and go, ooh, I know this place. I feel safe here. Me and Jen, we can do all of these things together. And then guess who feels safe? This grandma right here who has gotten to an age where we don't want to fall off. We don't want to have any accidents, any big deals. 
So um, that's how I prepare my horses. Now I'm going to go forward and go, this is the preparation for me to go to the Florida State Trails and they're awesome. So I'm hoping that I can get the grandkids to come and ride their bikes in the outdoor arena so that my two who have never really seen bicycles around them um, will feel good about it. So I might go, hey guys, come here, ride your bikes. And that prepares them also for things that they haven't seen before. It's their noises, their sounds, there's uh, the, the bike itself can be very frightening. And so can motorcycles and trucks and all of that. Even though they might see it in their environment, do they see it in this environment? So if I take my mantra of prior and proper preparation, if I look at that and prepare for as many things, experiences that my horses need to experience and then respond appropriately to, that keeps us all safe, especially if we're out on the trails. So here is my saying, prior and proper preparation. All of our preparations that go on my whiteboard back there, and I need to go buy one so you guys can really see. So today I'm gonna prepare them even more. So um, it's a good thing, you guys. Don't just think that you can go and take your horse anywhere and they're not gonna react to their environment. Because guess what? There's boogeyman all over the place. It could be that log, it could be that, that bike, it could be anything. It could be a butterfly that's, you know, it could spook them out of their eyes that they don't understand. So I had a horse, just to give you a little example, who was terrified of different colored jackets and she would react strongly if you were wearing a blue jacket, a bright blue, fluorescent blue jacket, or a bright yellow jacket. So just think about that, that some horses can respond to colors also. So anyway, let's make it a great day. Florida is awesome in the wintertime. Come down and enjoy Ocala. We've got WEC, which is the World Equestrian Center. We've got the Florida Horse Park. Come and enjoy it. There's horse racing. There is polo on the weekends. And there's me. So love you all. Blessings.